Right lads, I'll go through this with you quick. Uh, so first of all, I'll show you what I'm using for applying wise. So just a, literally a few sponges, which were all brand new. They do go a bit crusty, so which you can leave on if you've got sponges like that, but it's good to have some that are like new ones underneath, so you can peel off some of the old paint and use it like it's original, like the really yellow sponge, use that. You want a little tray just for spraying your paint into, because you're not gonna be spraying it directly on the gun when you're doing your sponge work. You're gonna be need a little palette, sort of like a tray, obviously just a little old tub thing. Uh, two paints I'm using is OD Green, which is that one. Uh, got it on eBay, I think, or Amazon, one of the two. There's the uh, Rao 6014 Olive. And the other one is a Rao 1019 Desert. Or Desert Storm, so I say, Desert Storm. There we go. That's the two paints I'm using. And I'm going to be doing this gun here. One of the old MP5s which is a bit different. There isn't as big a surface area as what the M4 is, which I'll show you there. But that's the, hopefully that will be the effect that we've got once we're done, all battered up. And the raised edges will be, obviously there'll be more prominent sort of dirt to the raised edges and sort of slightly less on the flat surfaces. But don't worry if you get a bit of dust or anything like that, because it literally does add to the effect. You can see there where I put one of these rails on when it was still a bit tacky. Literally just about there. That's where it's come off of my finger a touch, but it just adds to it. But then once you've left it overnight for a couple of days, that is literally rock hard now, solid paint. There's no way that's coming off at all. You can clear lacquer it. I tend not to bother because um, it makes it, it gives it a tiny little shine. Unless you can get a matte lacquer, I suppose, maybe and try that. But at the end of the day, you want it to be a bit battered up and looking. So that's the effect we're going to be going for, chaps. So anyhow. What I'll do is I'm going to literally just do a light coating of this now with the OD green, uh, which I'll try and do one handed. Give it a shake up. Well, you won't have to do OD green on all of it, but where I've just had previous, like, I've got to do a bit of a bodge fix there. I'm just going to literally, I'm going to try and hold this now, but I've got to look away from the screen, chap, so I do apologise if it goes wobbly. So. And when you're doing your spraying, um, let me give you an example down here. So say, uh, what I need something as an example. There we go. Right, sod it. Let's say that that paint can, that lid, is your gun. Now when you spray it, don't spray it like, directly on it. You want to start slightly to the side and start spraying before you hit your gun. So spraying across it like that. Yeah, so that... The spray is already coming out as you hit the gun, the material. And then obviously once you've gone the other side, stop. So if you look, see what I'm saying there, I'm starting it, I'm spraying so that my spray starts just above there. So I'm spraying here and I'm going and then going across. So if you spray directly onto it, you'll just make a pool of it with the paint. So you want to start off of it and then, yeah. Could show you with a suppressor, I suppose. By going, if I go diagonally across it like that, Down that now. It's hard to get it to focus. I need to get a finger or something in there. There we go. There's no pooling. It's just a nice clean cover. All right. So literally, with your OD green, uh, depending on areas you want to keep sort of a bit of detailing on it. There, I wouldn't go so heavy with the OD, but like especially across the top of the body and that. And literally from about, I'd say a ruler length away. Let's say just over a can's width away from the. Thing if you've got nothing to measure it with, so I'll keep it back there and just literally nice and light, just to mac down some of it. And we we see where I've done our old jobs on it, like especially there, just uh, just a little concentrated splat. Yeah, you with me? Literally all the way over the gun, and obviously I'm trying to avoid the areas you want to keep the detail in. I'm not too fussed by that, to be honest with you. But some people like to keep it all of it. And then what you'll start to see is you'll start to see the black just starting to dull down. You can't see it's clearly been sprayed with green, but you'll see that the black is starting to turn 
almost a tinge of slightly gray and that's what you want that's just, this is like you, you this is your dirt bit yeah so this is the, the rugged dirt part of it you just change diagon diagonals change angles just so you cover all the parts so obviously you've done a spray from this side here going across it so now you want to turn maybe you're looking down the gun and again nice and light and don't worry if you've missed anything going that way so if you've missed any spraying when you're going across the gun like that you'll probably capture it going across so don't try and get it if you've missed a little bit just leave it because you'll start over painting and then it'll start getting silly there so that's basically it that's that side done and that's all i do just dirty it down yeah so if you look at the paintwork there now it's just starting and you will get heavier bits of painting but don't worry about it because that all adds to it i'll show you back over here Uh, somewhere that's not had to, see all that in there is all OD green but it's all it all adds to the effect yeah Are you with me in between all the little gaps you look down behind there on that little pin in the rails it all adds to it I mean the best bit is the sponging effect if you've got a suppressor cover as well I mean that's a that's just a shoulder strap of an old yoke which I cut down one of the load of paracord around it tied it burnt the ends off and then super glued the knot and then just sprayed it up and it just looks like there's all grounding dirt and that into it but it's all spray that's all spray paint all sprayed and gnarled top of the pet box and that and with your scopes one thing i would suggest if you do if you are spraying and you've got scopes fitted i like spraying my guns with the stuff on it so that i can get it all matching and then what i do is i'll take off parts like every year i'll spray it all i sprayed all that with all that on yeah so I get it all the same. And then afterwards, what I do then is I take these bits off. Any things I don't want on there, all these rails, I take them off. And then I'll just touch up the areas where the scopes are going. Because it doesn't really matter if it doesn't look exactly the same under the scope. Because you're going to have a scope there. Do you know what I mean? So, but anyway, yeah. So if you are using scopes and you want to spray them, these are fucking magic. Little sticky labels. You can literally cut circles out of them. And they'll just peel off. I don't know how it is, but... Right, excuse me, I'm a crappy filming. But literally, yeah, just a little sticky thingy labels. Any details, you can actually cut them out, put them at different angles on your gun, you know, mark it, circle it. Yeah, so I recommend them if you do want to, if you are going to spray it with the thingy. But what I'm going to do now, chaps, is I'm going to set this up. I can spin this round. Now, I'll tell you what, I'll do a separate video. So, what I'll do is I'm going to turn the gun around and respray it. So I'll spray both sides and all the other little bits and bobs and then we'll come back and the next video will be with me adding the desert colour with the sponging effect, yeah? Cool, nice one chaps.